Have you ever had a phrase that almost haunted you uh, most of your life? If you have, then you know exactly what I mean. And mine is actually um, a biblical one. So I can't really see, I don't believe in ghosts, that you, it haunted me most of my life, but it certainly has come up all the time. And I always think it's God telling me something. And um, it's be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Let him do his thing. And I have a super hard time doing that. Now, my name is Charlene Gross Close. And in case you guys have not seen um, some of my content thus far, you'll know that I am pretty new at this. And right now, I am filming sideways for the first time in landscape. And it's really hard, really hard to just want to look at the lens uh, no, to just look at the lens, which is what I'm supposed to do, and not look at myself. Like I usually do when I have my phone up and you can get away with it. But no, you got to look over there. So if you see me, my eyes straying, it's because I'm trying to get used to this. And I am a newbie, but this is the fun and exciting thing about being uh, a new, is that you get to go on this journey with me. Anyway, a few months ago, I ordered these books from Well Watered Woman Company. Um, it's the, they're the Be Still and Know series, and, um, excuse me while I go get the phone. Anyway, so as I was saying before the phone rang, which, you know, life happens and we have to take care of that, um, I got these books a few months ago that were about uh, Be Still and Know, is the title by Well Water Woman Company, and I really had not had a chance to go through it, so I thought, you know what, I'm unpacking them, I had a chance, I was just too lazy to do it, and I need to really do this, and uh, this one looks like it's a study on Colossians 1, 15 through 20. And, oh, a study of Well Water Woman to memorize and meditate on the Christ hymns. So it's based on the hymns. You know, the famous hymns. So, that'll be interesting to, to get into. These ones I have not opened yet, because I, I guess I, I thought I would start with that one. Again, this happened a couple months ago. But this one is, uh, Be Still and Know, to memorize and meditate on Romans 12, 9 through 21. And this one is through Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. So we'll be doing these, and um, I'll let you know how that goes. Anyway, changing directions. Every once in a month, once a month, we go to something called uh, the Circle of Sisters, and that only happens every so often. And maybe you saw me on a video waiting for the Circle of Sisters to start. So. Um, this circle of sisters, I must say, was absolutely amazing, amazing, and it was just so wonderful. Our, in, in our church, um, and some other churches get together, and mostly women from our church, though, and uh, we just have a wonderful time, and we read from uh, several different places. There's food, and they decorate it really pretty, and it was all about growing. It was all about um, growth. Growing together was the title. Let me show you. Hold on. There's always a gift for us to take back. And this is the gift. And it's, uh, as you can see, a little plant. And this is actually edible. And, uh, it had a little verse on it. And the verse is right here. I took it off because I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll show you what, why in a minute, but it says, but growing the grace and knowledge of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, second Peter three eighteen, And that was the verse that was stuck to the little flower plant. And that was decoration. It was also for us to take home. And even the napkins were pretty. And one of the sisters gave this story that I just absolutely love, love. I don't know if my, many of you are gardeners, but I love to garden but I didn't know much about this this flower the animas and I think this happens actually with a lot more plants than we think that they do um, but the animas are a flower that have to soak uh, first and then you put them in a cold dry place dark place for a while and you have to leave them there for a while in order for them to sprout and then you put them in light and then the light helps them strengthen and grow. And then you put them out in the cold of March. They're cold weather. You put them out in the cold of March. That's when you plant them. And then um, you cover them as needed. You run out, right? If you live in a cold place like ours, where it's cold up until pretty much April, May, a lot of times. And you run out and you cover them and you uncover them as needed. Um, and then 
they turn out absolutely beautiful and I've got to get a picture of them actually um, to put in my scrapbook um, or that I'll do in my Bible Bible journaling because they it was she brought she brought us a sample and they were just absolutely beautiful and worth all the all the time that you put into them but the model of the story was that um, God sometimes when we ask him you know he puts us in a cold dark place sometimes um, to watch us grow and sometimes we need to be still and just grow but we do need to grow and uh, suffering is sometimes part of that growth and then he but he takes care of us even while we're in that cold, cold dark place he takes care of us and uh, so and then you turn out to be something beautiful at the end and I just loved it so much that I wrote who who told the story this is in my Bible interleaved Bible that I do Bible journaling with. I wrote the story out and uh, uh, now I'm in the process of, and I could not find my hosh posh. I have hosh posh and I could not find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay this out and I'm going to tape it onto my Bible. I'm going to use the napkin. I'm going to use the, oh, we, we wrote this little, she gave us a little piece of paper and then write, it says, write down an area in your Christian walk that you would like to grow and mature in, be specific. So I did that. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that in my Bible. I'm going to put this in my Bible and I'm also going to put the, the song that was handed out, bind us together that we sang at the end. And then I'm going to decorate it a little bit with this and I'm going to put all this in my Bible. So I always have it in my Bible and never uh, forget this night. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And, um, I'll show you what happens. Now, the funny thing is that just a month ago, the Lord led me to Romans 5, 3, 4, um, about suffering and character and hope. Um, and so I definitely know, I don't believe in coincidences very much. So when things like that happen, I, I really do think God is trying to tell me something. And I have asked him for growth. And I know that when we ask him for growth, sometimes we do have to go through some suffering. And I think God is preparing me for that. So, um, Maturity sometimes does mean that we have to go through the cold, cold times. Yeah, I am writing this down now in my, this verse now, in my Bible journaling as a Bible journal. And so I'm writing this verse down and I'll show you guys a better view of it here in a minute. Okay, so this isn't glued down permanently yet because I wanna try the hosh posh thing. And if it doesn't work, then you know I'll change the gears but for now I just basically put things where they need to go and tape them down so um, I put on top of here um, the word suffering endurance character and hope in a minute I'll tell you why the word hope is so important to me here's the little story I told you about the flower the animals here are the things that I need to work on trusting God and others being vulnerable surrendering and forgiveness those are the things that I need to work on. This is the song that we sang at the end of the Circle of Sisters, Bind Us Together. This is the napkin that was used. And this is a sister, the sister that gave this story, she wrote for me uh, the two flowers. There was an, another one, the ranunculus also, that does the same thing. Uh, so she, I want to keep that on there that in her writing. This is the verse um, about Second Peter, about growing. And then this is the verse about um, not only that but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance endurance produces character and character produces hope now let me tell you about hope hope is actually my middle name yeah hope is my middle name esperanza in spanish to be more specific uh, so i take that to heart very much so um because I think my life personally, because of the things that I have gone through, have been, have had a lot to do with just hoping and trusting in the Lord and hoping in the Lord. And that's what's gotten me through my trials. So I think the Lord is definitely telling me and affirming yesterday, yes, you have hope and hope has gotten you through hope in me, not just in anything. And uh, so this is very important to me because of that. And then another funny thing is that um, I have an Etsy shop and not too long ago I made a t-shirt that's on my Etsy that says sisters in Christ are growing together 
I couldn't even believe it. I'm like, Lord, you just like put everything together so well. Uh, and just trying to really tell me because I've been putting myself out there a lot as a person with this YouTube channel, not knowing what in the world I'm doing, starting Bible journaling, um, other social media and different things. And then reaching out to sisters personally for a prayer group or for um, a Bible journaling group and things like that. And um, sometimes I expect certain reactions right away and I don't get them. And Satan starts whispering in my ear, oh, this or that. And then I, I, and, but then wisdom comes and wisdom lets me know, you know, the Lord lets me know that Charlene, just because somebody doesn't answer like this or answer like that, you do the same thing. You, you do the same thing. Stop reading things into things that are, don't need anything read into them. And so even if just one person watches this, for example, this YouTube right now, um, it does not mean that God doesn't have a purpose and that I shouldn't be doing this because God keeps affirming that I should, that there are many women out there, 52 year old women who have gone through similar things that need to um, hear this and who have the same experiences that could really um, learn um, something, encourage, get, be encouraged somehow from, from my life. And uh, so I am just growing, I'm just learning I don't know exactly what I'm doing and the road ahead of me is not exactly um, very clear but God is with me and my hope is in him and I am growing not by myself anymore as I used to keep myself in a hermit I am reaching out and I am growing with sisters in Christ that we have something in common and a like-minded and um, I have known Christ since I was 14. I was baptized at 17, and I was teaching Sunday school by 19 or 18, maybe even. And um, yet, I felt like I've been dormant for a very long time. There was a time that I went away from the Lord from about the age of 23 to 26. And um, I felt like uh, until now, I'm 52. 53, maybe a year, I've been kind of like more firm in the Lord. And I feel like I've been just waddling through. And now I'm actually starting to walk in the steps that my Lord meant for me to walk in and not what I wanted to walk in. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. It's my truth. Um, I am growing in Christ and I'm hoping that maybe you want to grow with me if you stuck around to watch this whole thing. Um, I'm a total eclectic and a little bit of a mess, but um, maybe we'll learn something from each other. And there, did I manage to keep my eye where I was supposed to all the time? No, but that's okay. See you on the next time. Bye-bye.